Hello and welcome to Health Matters on Channels Television. Thanks for being with us. I am Mary Alale Yusuf. Now, blood is such an essential component of life. For some reasons, though, there's a shortfall, and that's when a transfusion is needed. The most frequently transfused people in high-income countries are those over 65 years. In lower-income countries, it's children under five. It is believed in medical circles that voluntary, non-remunerated blood donors are the foundation of a safe, sustainable blood supply, and without a system based on regular, voluntary, unpaid blood donation, no country can provide enough for its patients who need transfusions. One of the reasons regular donations are needed is that blood can be stored for only a limited time before use. My guest is a consultant hematologist, and she is in charge of the Lagos State Blood Transfusion Service. Dr. Bodurin Oshikomaya, you're welcome to the show. Thank you very much. I'm curious, though, what do over 65-year-olds need blood for? Um, as you grow older, as one grows older, there are more medical conditions that come up, like cancers, um, they might have um, commonly cancers. So people with cancers generally need transfusions? Quite a number of them, yes. And then elderly patients, to people too, they do not eat very well, so they have nutritional and anemias too. So there are so many medical conditions that occur as you grow much older. But we have those too. So does it mean that we are having older people walking around anemic? Well, yes, I'm sure of that. That is disheartening, yeah. Yeah. you know. Um, so is, is it whole blood they usually need or blood products? Um, usually, because I want to actually know why blood is differentiated and who gets it. Um, the, every blood component has its own use. And so when you transfuse all blood to people, you are wasting it. So most of the time, when red cells, when a patient is anemic, understand, you just need red cells. So all you have to do is just to give that particular component. However, the plasma, which is the fluid part of the blood, can be used for other things. We have conditions like hemophilias. We have conditions of people that are losing blood in a large um, amount. Then the platelets, which is another component of the um, old blood, can be used for patients that have got low platelet con uh, counts. Hope you understand. So generally, um, the this, this study and the teaching is that you give the specific component, the specific part of the blood that the, that patient, the patient needs. needs. So you can end up donating one pint and three people get to use that is, a different component. That is, that That's is awesome. it. That's what's happening now. Why, why do our under fives need blood so much? Well, you know, under fives, they have a smaller body mass. They have less blood compared to the adults and they get ill easily. So when an under five has a case of malaria, which involves lysis of the cells, their blood cells become lower faster. Also, nutrition. There are many under fives that are not well, that they don't have enough nutrients needed to form blood cells. So they also come back with anemia. Okay, so I can readily see why mm. that is an African, African problem. problem. Nu malnutrition, yes. that's one reason. The, uh, sickle cell sickle anemia, cell. Yes, which we cell have anemia more of, is there. that's another And it cuts reason. across every age group. And then malaria. Yes, malaria, there you go. yes. So that means that we are always going to need a lot we, of blood for under always, fives yes. in this country, yes, even yes. if we strike out malnutrition, right? Yes. Okay, so who can give blood and who can't? Well, um, we start, let's start from the individual that can give blood. First of all, the age. The age should be between um, 18 and 65 years old. However, as I've been saying, um, between the ages of 60 and 65, the individual must have been donating blood before then. What okay. I'm trying to say is that you shouldn't be a first-time donor by At the time you age. are 60. Understand? The second thing is the weight. We want the patient to be, um, the donor to be 50 kilograms and above. Then um, you have to have answered a set of questions. Those questions are um, the donor eligibility questions, which wants to know if the patient is in a good state, if the patient is having a good lifestyle for females, what the patient, if the donor is pregnant, wants to know if the donor is on a menstrual cycle, wants to know if the individual has any form of a condition that involves taking drugs regularly, wants to know if the donor has a heart condition or not. So there are so many questions you have to find out. Also the general condition of the person. We want to do a blood pressure, we want to check if there are tattoos there. There are so many things What's we need wrong to find. With tattoos? Well, um, um, having tattoos, if it is done, uh, it's a deferral, deferral criteria. If it is done within 
six to nine months of presentation. Okay. So we'll tell you, wait until six so to nine months. So the person can come back later. The person will definitely, will encourage the person. We, if we will keep in touch with the person to come back later. Understand? So we, after that, we'd like to check the hemoglobin level of the prospective donor. It has to be between 12 to 13. Because we don't want to take blood from that individual and the individual will end up needing that blood again. Mm. So we have to make sure that the blood level is adequate enough to give another person. Okay, so generally, I believe blood is screened for uh, hepatitis, yes. B and C, yes. HIV, yes. syphilis. Yes, yes, yes. Any other things? No, those are the major ones that we do in this country. Are there any other things that could be a problem? Well, in that we're not screening for? Well, in Nigeria, those are what we need to do. Outside the country, it's different because of the conditions there. Like outside the country, they will screen for malaria. Sure, they won't even take your blood if you have gone to a malaria prone area. They will screen for Chagas disease. So every Chagas? Con yes, every what on earth is that? It's one of the infections <laughs> that causes issues there. So every country, every region has a different criteria. But the major ones, the constant ones, are HIV, hepatitis B, hepatitis C. And and yes, yes. Some people say that it takes time for some diseases to show up, that you need a blood culture for those to show up. How true is it in this case? Well, <laughs> for blood, we don't need a blood culture for blood around blood here. But, um, Does it mean that all those diseases, if they are there, show up immediately? I mean, like AIDS, for example. Yes. Some years back, they say you had to wait for some time, yes. months. Before you know, you know, that, okay, this patient doesn't have HIV, that if they caught HIV, it takes some time some to months. actually manifest in the okay. blood. Okay, there is a window period for HIV to manifest and for you to see it in the result. And that is why the Lagos State Blood Transition Service, as well as the National Blood Transition Service, has said that every blood that should be transferred must be screened by ELISA, which is a fourth generation um, screening method. So this shows... It's the, 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 for, uh, the possibility of a patient having one of those infections, of a donor having one of those infections, I did not show it's very, very low. Okay. It's very low. So we use a fourth generation. So the lysers screening. take out all that waiting time for you. Yes. It they, helps they us. You will see, find yes, if there's find, a disease. Yes, if there's a disease. So how long it's does that take? It's quite sensitive. Um, the ELISA is a machine. As a, we have to, it takes about three to four hours. So that is why we must do everything together. All the blood must be screened together. Uh, so once blood is collected, is, um, is donated, most of the time, it's not the donated blood that, that is transfused is immediately. immediately. We have to take it to the screening room, which takes a process before it's a screen. And that is why we are encouraging regular non registered donations, so that there's always a Some stock blood of in the blood store. in the blood bank for use when it is needed. How long does the stored blood last? before you have to dispose of it? It takes last 42 days. 42 days? Yes, please. That is pretty depending, short. Yes, depending on the, it's because of the anticoagulant that is being used. So, okay. So, so that means 42 days. That's just over a month. Yes. So you need people to really be coming in. Yes. How is it now? I mean, we've been talking about blood donations for years. What would you say is the... Difference is it better maybe from three years ago to now or worse or just the same? Well, um, for us here, it is better, but it's quite slow. The rate at which people are donating is getting better as the years goes by, but it's still not enough to meet the needs of the population we have here. Okay, so I want us to know because we are trying to encourage people to donate, right? So let's really put it out there what they are in for. By the time you put the needle in the person's arm, yes, please. how long does it have to stay there before the blood is collected? It takes about 10 minutes. 10 minutes? Yes. Even less than 10 needs sometimes. It depends on the size of the needle. So okay, if they, so the, the needle size sizes of, no, are different? depends on the size of the vein. So okay, if the vein. the vein is big, the blood flows faster. And that is why we always look out for the bigger vein vessels okay. so that the blood will come out sometimes five minutes. To 10 wow. minutes, yes. It's a very short period and the blood comes but out. But during the time that you are screening this blood, yes, yes. do you require for the donor to sit around, you know, so mm. that you can talk to the person later, tell mm. him this is what we found, this is mm. what you need to do? Mm. Because what people tell us is that um, for blood donors, a, a, a donating session is like a mini, um, 
a mini consultation session where they tell you, okay, we discovered that you have a high blood pressure, you need to do this, that, and the other. So, um, as I said before, while we are trying to make sure that the donor is eligible to donate blood, if you find anything wrong okay. from those physical um, checks, or from the questions, you need to tell them the reason why we need to defer them. Okay. So if there's a high blood pressure, the blood pressure is, I will advise them. First of all, tell them the consequence of that value and why they need to see a doctor. Because if we do not tell them why, they will work out and nothing will be done. That is why blood donation is an avenue of knowing more about your It's a nice status. way of so, going um, for a checkup check -up. without paying. <laughs> Yeah, I mean. You can say that again. <laughs> you can say that again. Okay, but so, considering something yes. like hepatitis B, yes, so, that might take some time. So usually, um, once you're a voluntary blood journal, you don't need to wait for it to be screened. We have your details. We have your number. We have your email address. We have your home address. So once um, you notice anything wrong, we'll get across to you to let you know of what is happening. And endeavor encourage you to go to the hospital. It might even help out to tell you the specific places to go to to ease medical attention. Okay, great. So where do we go to? Where does someone go to if he wants to donate blood? Well, um, Legacy Blood Transition Service has got a um, purpose-built donor, um, donor clinic in General Hospital Lagos. That okay. is on the island. We also have one in General Hospital Alimosho. However, all General Hospitals with vibrant donor clinics. And Can't, teaching yes. hospitals, I hope. Yes, teaching hospitals too. Yes, we forget about that. All teaching hospitals. Okay. You can also go to the Lagos University Teaching Hospital. Every other place. But those kind of things are not done at primary health care centers, are they? No, we do not donate blood at primary health care so centers. Secondary tertiary. Secondary tertiary centers. That's good. That's good, but considering the complexity of traffic and commuting in Lagos, are there any ideas, any plans to really bring it closer to the people so that people can, you know, yes, do it um, with more comfort, <laughs> so to speak? There are lots of plans for this to happen. Um, however, um, in Lagos, if you really need to donate blood, um, the Lagos University Teaching Hospital and the donor, Purpose Bee Donor Center at the General Hospital Lagos. So students can do that yes, easily yes. while they're on campus. While they're on campus. They open over the weekend. That's on Saturdays. Okay. So if you're busy Mondays to Fridays, you can always go in to bleed, to be bled on Saturday. Be I bled. Have, yes. That sounds However, horrible. However, there are plans on bringing... <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, to, it's to okay. donate. <laughs> so, However, there are plans in progress of bringing the donor clinics to where you are. Plants like blood, mobil blood mobiles are coming up. And so things are going to get better. Blood mobiles. Yes. yes. After the break, we're going to talk about these blood mobiles. Yes, yes. Please stay with us. We're coming back right after now. You're welcome back to the show. If you want to ask questions, the number to call is 0808-054-2233. That's 0808-054-2233. You can also tweet at CTV underscore Mary A. And speaking about tweets... I just want to mention that Tolu Agbele is watching us live from Tehran wow. in Iran. Yes, <laughs> that's how far you're going. So let's talk about the blood mobiles. Okay. Well, um, a blood mobile is a vehicle um, that has got everything you need for a successful blood donation. Okay. So um, it could consist of a number of couches, maybe two to four. Uh, it also consists, it also has um, emergency services. They just so you can actually use happens. it to go and get the blood yes, at, can, designated yes, at designated centers. centers okay, that's or great. very poorly accessible centers. Okay, okay. That, that, that's really good. So, um, apart from all this stuff about having a free checkup, <laughs> what, <laughs> what other benefits does the donor get? Um, the donor gets, or to the donor, <laughs> there are yes. two things. Well, to the donor, um, you know, when you give out blood, you, it's an opportunity. Your body, there's a rejuvenation of cells, so it helps your body to bring in new cells. Okay. Understand? The second Does thing... Does that make us look younger? Yes. You know, for saying that... You must that, have been giving blood. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> for saying that, you know, I always give this illustration. That um, if you look at a woman that is Wait, meant... just a minute. <laughs> yeah. You give that illustration, but we are having someone shalom coming from Kaduna. Let's quickly take... Oh, she's no more there. Do try again. <laughs> so what's the illustration? That illustration is if you look at a woman that is young, she's in a menstrual period, 
another kind of thing. She's giving her blood. She looks younger, much more beautiful compared to the more elderly ones that are in their menopausal stages. So those kind. they uh, kind of uh, drier. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's not big, so blood. if you know you want to look fresh and vibrant, just keep donating your blood. Apart from that, um, donating blood helps to regulate your iron content in Ooh. your body. And it's believed that when it is well regulated, there is a less incidence of cardiovascular diseases. So your heart is in a better state. Um, and thirdly, when you give blood, because you know you are saving a life, there's this feel-good feeling. It will improve your mood. So, um, up, um, up so less what, depression. Less depression. In short, there are studies that say that donors do not have depression. Regular voluntary donors do not have depression. They really have. So um, we also want to give. You no, know, we have to appreciate the donors. So some That's senses, a good one. Yeah, we'll, yeah, let's quickly take, take Tunde from Abuja. Hello, Tunde. Are you there? Yes, I'm here. What's your question? Sorry? What's your question, Tunde? Okay, my question is, um, <clears throat> I need some lectures on hepatitis C and C. Okay. Can you hear me? I can hear you. Is that it? All right, so I will let the doctor handle that. He wants to know about hepatitis B and C. Why are they dangerous? C are viral infections that affect the liver, so and it is quite contagious, um, and it can progress to a patient, a patient having um, liver cancer. Okay. So we don't want anybody transmitting that from person to person and causing cancer in the long run. But when so, you screen, and we know here, that, yes, you can be sure whether there's hepatitis, hepatitis B, C, or not. Or not. So there's no uh, fear. There's of... no fear, but that is why we go through very stringent. Um, protocols um, through during the screening process. So every unit of blood that has been noticed to have an infection of hepatitis B or C is discarded and we get back to the donor so that they can seek for medical attention as soon as possible. So Tunde's are really calling in today. We have one from Lagos. Hello, Tunde in Lagos. Tunde, Hello. are you there? Hello. Yes, what's your question? Welcome to the show. Hello. Hello, I can hear you. Go on. Oh, we lost Tunde. Tunde from Lagos, please try and call again. Um, so, people feel that when they give blood, they really have to drink something, especially something sweet. Is it really true? Well, it's not true, but you need to hydrate yourself. Okay, so, so you what you blood, need is water, what you need not is necessarily water. something sugary. Not necessarily something okay. sugary. <laughs> but, you know, it has gone on for years and we just allow it to go on. But okay. we always tell them, that's pipe what we're giving you. You need to take a lot of water. All right. Now, um, when you do a transplant, sometimes there's rejection and you have to, you know, help the body accept. Now, some are saying that giving blood is like a transplant. Do you have issues of rejection? Well, um, I will not call it rejection, but we have, there could be issues. There could be some sort of blood transfusion reactions. Okay. And that is why before blood is given, it is cross-matched with the recipient's units. So we'll take a part So of even the if the blood is the same, you still have to cross-match? Yes, we, just, we still have to cross-match because also, even the blood is, if it is the that means you are checking the major... Um, the major factors are the blood groups, the major groups. There okay. are still some other blood groups that we do not check for readily except if you cross match. So we have to do those cross matching um, procedures before the patient is given. So blood. you do all this? We do all this. You, you check the patient? We check the patient. Let's blood. quickly take Oladiji first. Hello, Oladiji. Hello. Hello. What's your question? My question is that I'm hearing of this blood donation in general. I'm hearing of the blood donation, but... But what? Only people that I visit, they are enjoying this food swimming. They have some clinics, some on the land, that they don't swim, they don't collect blood. You, they are having problem donating blood. Okay. No. I think you're they, cracking you go there. and do CCD and, uh, and, and blood group and they repeat the donor themselves. No screening. No screening. Oh, no screening. In Oyo State. He's calling from Oyo State. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Oladiji. 
How true is this? Well, um, I, we need to know where it is happening. But, I am, you know, I mentioned that there are national policies. That is why policies are important, laws are important. So the national policies encourages, it, it, makes, it's, it makes it a prerequisite before transfusion that you screen blood. And that is... But they have a responsibility to the patient. The patient believes you, you screen the blood. That is a is there a way training. for the patient to be sure that blood has been screened? There is always a way, like in Lagos State, the patient will look at the Lagos State logo that is on it. There's always papers to it that you can find out even before transfusion that is this blood with this skin because every blood unit has, um, has its identity. Okay. You understand? So um, other places, we need to do more monitoring, more enforcement of the laws. But here in Lagos State, there are screening numbers, certification numbers, blood bag numbers to make sure and to confirm that the blood has been screened. No so, blood in Lagos State will be transfused to anybody without screening. If, it's happening, if it happens, do let us know. What more do other states need? Let's assume some states are not screening the way they should. What more do they need to actually do this? Let me take David from Ikoto Ibe first. David, hello. Hello, good afternoon, no, madam. Good afternoon. So, I what's your, your I appreciate your every Saturday. I appreciate the love respect you and keep Thank you, you in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you. Hello? Yes, I'm listening to you. Do you have a question? Uh, this uh, donation of blood is good. But one thing I'm ever emphasizing is that these people we can't go to loot, they are selling it to people. Okay. Can you hear me? I can hear you. I yeah, can I hear you. People, but in me, if I eat somebody that I need it, I will give it immediately. Thank you I very much. Them. We'll handle that. So David is talking about people selling blood. What's, is there a disadvantage to selling the blood? Yes. I mean, if they are prepared to give money. No, blood is supposed to be free. It's not supposed to be sold. Understand? Um, however, some money is paid for the processes done to make sure that the blood is safe. Understand, this is a token because it has been subsidized by the government. So if blood is being sold, um, then we should need to investigate about it. Um, if the blood is not available in private, in public health facilities, they might get it in the pub, uh, private health facilities. Move my head a little bit of token, but blood is free. Whatever you pay for blood is for the screening process, which is already subsidized by the Lagos State Government. Okay, so there's a little fee for yes, screening? Yes, for screening, yes. The, how much would that be? Well, um, <laughs> it's a token. We, need, we token. need to go now. Thank you yes, so yes. much, Dr. <laughs> Bodun Rinoshikomaya, for coming to the show. That's been very great having you, thank you. around. Thank and you. thank you so much for being with us as we discuss this topic. We hope you've been enlightened. Have a wonderful day. I am Mary Alale Yusuf.